Hello and how's it going everyone? It is Skullzy here with the latest Bethesda news. First of all, you may notice I don't sound like my normal boisterous self in this video. I'm probably going to be a lot less annoying and a lot less random. I've been going through a few things the last few days that have been driving me nuts, dealing with anxiety, depression, all that stupid stuff that you don't care about. You're here for gaming news and Bethesda news, so don't worry, I'll get to be my usual self here soon in a couple days, hopefully, but I still have something very interesting to talk about in today's video. Something that paints a pretty clear picture that Bethesda is highly upgraded their tech for their future games, including Starfield and The Elder Scrolls VI, and this is again a community discovery thanks to a couple amazing members of the Bethesda community and a couple amazing content creators as well. So, first of all, huge shout out to Jenkins again and Trev the Dev for this discovery, and Trev, aka the Viking Programmer, even typed up a bunch of information to take away from this discovery that should better explain how all this will benefit Bethesda in a way that the majority of the gaming audience should kind of understand. Of course, and Anyone with an in-depth technical understanding of game engines and just game rendering and optimization pipelines will get even more from this video as well, but don't worry, if you're like me and not a technical expert, you'll be able to just get hyped from all this either way, because Trev the Dev, the Viking programmer, did a bunch of work to make this more easier accessible and more easily explained by me also. So huge shout out to Jenkins and the Viking programmer, links to all their content is down in the description below, be sure to check them out, or Cliff Racers will probably chase you around for a while until you die and respawn a few times or follow them whichever happens first and I would advise following them because cliff racers are relentless they'll get you they'll get you when you do when you do poops but either way, let's not waste any more time and get to today's information. Trev the Dev and Jenkins discovered that Bethesda Game Studios will be utilizing technology from the Forge to optimize their game engine. And the Forge is something I have talked about on a previous video in the past. However, we got more information today that kind of verifies this and more information telling us what this could exactly do for Starfield and the Elder Scrolls 6. But if you look up Bethesda Game Studios optimized creation engine, the Forge, just like type any random collection of that kind of into the news, you'll find articles like this and other stuff because even the Forge themselves are saying Bethesda is using their technology for Starfield, but Bethesda is even going further and using the Forge code and actually kind of making their own thing a little bit on it to coincide with the creation engine, which is what Bethesda Game Studios actually does with most of their engine modules or just modules used for game development. You can even find the Forge stuff on GitHub as well. The Viking programmer gave me all this information, so there'll be links to that down in the description also if you want to check it out for yourself. But like I said, Trev the Dev actually typed up some information for us to take away from this discovery, and he's an actual dev himself. He has a, an actual game out there that he's updating regularly and stuff, and on top of this, the Forge themselves, the company actually behind all this, actually explains this also. So this is all confirmed information. For once, we're not talking about speculation. You can take the speculation salt and throw it across the room this time, but maybe don't throw too hard because you'll probably need it for future Bethesda stuff. But this is what Trev the Dev typed up for us today. So first of all, by Bethesda Game Studios using the Forge for Starfield, The Elder Scrolls 6, and beyond, the Forge is supportive of DirectX ray tracing technology, DirectX 12, and Vulkan 1.1, so all the new shiny things, and it'll probably be updated with a newer version of shiny as well, and the Forge will also utilize a new math library, and the old one that Bethesda was, was using was quite limited, as anyone who mods with SKSE would understand, because you've had to update a lot of the runtime libraries and stuff like that, but on top of this, the Forge's new math library library also supports 3D algebra, and the math library is based on open-sourced Sony Vector Math, which will allow for easier and more accessible modding, so it seems like Bethesda is being very careful to make sure that their new engine and all the new engine assets will still be accessible, or even more accessible, for modders, so that should be pretty awesome for people who want modding to stick around, like myself. Also, Bethesda Game Studios will be using Oz-based animations, and Oz is a literal skeletal animation toolkit designed with performance in mind. Bethesda has replaced their previous Havoc-based animation system, possibly because it was EOL. Some of the features in Oz reflect this as well, and Oz is engine agnostic, meaning Bethesda can take it and put it into their game engine, and it should work alongside it pretty well as long as they fine-tune it a bit, and that seems to be what Bethesda Game Studios uses or looks for in systems like this. Also, some animators and programmers have said that Oz has an extensive structure for animation runtime, including high-quality compression keyframes for all joints, well-compressed scaling via normalized quad... Thank <laughs> you. 
Quaternions, what is that, Trev the Dev? Are you Rick Sanchez? He also goes on to say, Oz has better runtime tracks, which allow for driving animations in real time. An example of which could be a robot arm being controlled by a keyboard in real time, but done entirely via animation. So this is some pretty awesome modern stuff. And also there's systems that allow for the removal of redundant frames and just better optimization in animation. So this kind of matches up with Bethesda also improving their animations greatly, because like Todd Howard said, they're going to have a new animation system, and not just Maya, but an actual new animation system all together with these Oz animations. Also, the Forge will support Android and iOS with additional accredited developer requests for support on last-gen and current-gen consoles, including PS5, Xbox Series X, Switch, Stadia, and, and anything last-gen, like it said. And the Forge can also utilize memory management for both GPU and CPU, and also multi-thread resource loading. So, this is some full next-gen technology and will be real great for engine optimization, which is something the creation engine definitely needs. So, by using the Forge, and any issue you can bring up regarding the creation engine seems to be fixed here. The animations, low time, jankiness, everything seems to be fixed by Bethesda utilizing the Forge code here. It even supports touchscreen navigation and gestures, which is crazy to think about. Maybe that, that can go along with the Switch thing. But also, the Forge also supports all new shaders and stuff, and has a built-in window manager and is also platform independent, meaning that you can utilize this for the PS5, you can make fine-tuned changes for the Xbox, for PC. This is a big change here because this means that Bethesda can have even better optimization for individual platforms. And Trev finalizes his notes by saying the goal of Forge seems to be heavily oriented around abstracting the render pipeline away from the native hardware while still performing quite well and being rather extensive. The features present do not reflect Bethesda's intentions with this tool, which is true. These are just things the Forge can do, but of course why would Bethesda not want to use at least the things that fit what they're looking for, especially if they're there for them to use. I don't know why Todd Howard to be like, no, I don't want to use something that will help me specifically that you have to offer. That he's going to use the stuff that works. Obviously, not all this is going to be in their future games. Like, I highly doubt Starfield and Test 6 will have touchscreen navigation and stuff, but I'm, uh, this is just an example. Trev also finishes up by saying the fact that they choose a rendering pipeline with extensive mobile support may not reflect a shift to mobile support on Creation Engine, but it's still quite interesting. So, yes, this is confirmed. Bethesda is utilizing the Forge tech technology to optimize their game engine being specifically used in Starfield and thus later on the Elder Scrolls 6. But like like Trev the Dev said and like I said, all the stuff listed here isn't everything we should expect to see from Bethesda. It's just stuff they can use if they want. So I mean if there's something in this list that they want to use, they're definitely gonna use it and I'm sure there's definitely some stuff in this list they're gonna want to use. It's it's super next gen or I, I guess current gen at least. Which some people may be like, Scrollsy, but that's just current gen now. They're caught up. Why is that news? It dude, shut shut up. Shut up, go overdose on Skuma. It, it's big news because Bethesda has been using outdated tool sets for a long time. The majority of the gaming community has been complaining that the creation kit is the biggest flaw with Bethesda and is holding their games back and is, is a laughing stock and all this other stuff that some people say. And now I guarantee you that we have confirmed proof that this will no longer be a problem, that we're still going to get people hating on the creation engine or just hating on this new updated version of Bethesda's game engine. Either way, I think this is all big news, especially following that Bethesda will now be using my which is better than, than 3D Max because 3D Max wasn't even a animation program to start. It just had animation stuff added into it. So even by using Maya, that's an improvement. So now we have the Forge being utilized to push up Bethesda Game Studios' game engine to the next level. And I think that any any concern that their game engine will still be the creation kit is 100% debunked now. It's going to be massively upgraded thanks to the help from the Forge, and this is huge news. Either way, that's going to finish up everything I want to talk about in today's video. Hopefully this gets you hyped for Starfield and beyond, and as always, if you enjoy the content, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and turn notifications on, and if you want to help grow the channel and the community, be sure to share the video, share the channel, get people to be aware of the content, because YouTube really ignores channels underneath 100,000 subscribers. However, since I've been asking you all to share the content, the algorithm has been making the channel grow a lot faster. So huge thank you, it is much appreciated, and speaking of appreciation, huge shout out to these amazing people for going above and beyond to support the channel and bring you content like this. If you want to get a permanent feature video shout out from this point forward, you can support the channel over on Coffee. Patreon or here on YouTube as an exclusive channel member. Links to all this and more are down in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching. Be sure to tune in next time when I just hope 2021 can get better soon and that Starfield is just around the corner for us because we definitely need it right now. just works.